Robert Vermosi, the author of When Gadgets Betray Us. Robert, hackers in the tech community have been romanticized. Many books have been written about the hacker ethic. There are going to be many people in the audience who, who rather fancy the idea of being a hacker. Maybe there are hackers watching this. Do you have a romantic view of hacking, or is it always bad? Um, well, I, I'm one of the people that would like to take the word hacking back. And, uh, well, what does the word it, mean? Because I don't even know what it means. It means somebody who takes apart something, for curiosity's sake. And I want that word to be taken back because I know a lot of really dedicated ethical researchers who can take apart gadgets and explain how they work. They can take apart code and explain how they work who are not doing it for nefarious reasons. Um, I think there are some, some bad individuals out there. And in the book, I call them cyber criminals to distinguish from the romanticized term hacker. Uh, most of the people I know are very bright and inquisitive individuals. And I wouldn't necessarily say that they live up to that romantic notion that you see in the movies and, uh, and TV about what a hacker might be. Why has hacking, though, become so romanticized, and particularly amongst, I think, young people who are into technology? Well, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a way to take down something that's loftier than them. If you can shut down a, a university computer system or if you can shut down a major corporation in some way, that's, that's control, that's power. And for some people, that's, that's a real thrill and an adventure. But I would say, for the most part, uh, most of the people I talk to do not do that and would not do that. What is your view, particularly in your book, about gadgets um, of intellectual property theft mm -hmm. and the way in which people are using their gadgets to steal content uh, from media companies and from individuals. Right. And it, it's more subtle than that. Um, you could have a company that's locked down where all the systems in the company are very secure. For example, you don't even have a USB port on your, on your workstation so that you, you can't even connect your mobile phone to it. But the data that's displayed on the screen, you can take a picture of it with your mobile phone. And so you have environments now where you've got these commercial gadgets coming in and they're otherwise secure, but they're being defeated in very subtle ways because of the gadgets that we're bringing into our personal lives that we frankly do not leave home without. What do we do about that, about all this intellectual property theft and, and the way in which there are certain gadgets which seem to make it easier and easier? Well, it's always going to be a game of cat and mouse, and we're just going to have to think of the data as being what we secure as opposed to the device that we worry about securing. We move away from this idea of firewalls and other things protecting us, and we start encrypting the data. We, we get down to the cellular level. That's, that's what my company, Makana, does, is they put security down at the chip level. And so we start by making the devices secure, we make the data secure, and then we provision who gets access to the data, and and we regulate it in those ways. We just changed the paradigm a little bit. The way we've been securing things before doesn't work in today's world. And beyond security, what else needs to happen when it comes to encouraging people to respect other people's intellectual property? Um, we need to redefine privacy and to have some control over that. Um, the ability for me to go out there and say to a company, what information do you have about me? And wow, can I delete that information? I really don't feel comfortable that you have that information. In other words, giving me back the permission to own my, my information. Now, that's something that we don't yet have in this country and in a lot of uh, different countries. The, e the EU is close to um, having very strict privacy laws. They're very close to it, but nobody's got the magic bullet yet around privacy and we need to have more discussion about what that means for all of us so that we all can have the data that we need to get by but still have our privacy.